Hi, I'm Ann Wynn with Cambridge Health Tech Institute here at the 2014 Next Generation Diagnostic Summit in Washington, D.C., running August 19th through the 21st. I'm here today with two keynote speakers from the Clinical Application for Cell-Free DNA and Single Cell Sequencing Conferences, Dr. Sunny Shia of Harvard University and Dr. Maximilian Dean of Stanford University. Thank you for both being here today. My first question for you is, what do you see as some of the greatest current challenges of what we might call genomic sequencing at the limits of detection? So we've been working on single cell genomics. Um, the challenges I see are accuracy and uniformity. We have a single cell and we want to report the entire genome. Um, a single SNP, one out of uh, three times, 10 to the ninth of the basis in a human cell. If it's uh, has a mutation, we want to be able to detect that. And this is becoming possible with uh, whole genome amplification. Um, if we can do the single cell amplification very precisely, then the single cell genomics would be the same as the bulk measurement, and then the uh, genomics, I think, should be done on every single cell. Under a microscope, you see the cell, and you grab the cell and you do the sequencing and that will simplify uh, many uh, tasks such as uh, de novo assembly. Um, I think we're getting there. Uh, the challenge is how to make the amplification precise, accurate and uh, uh, uniform. And Dr. Dean, what are your thoughts on the challenges? Yes, I have some very similar thoughts. I think the challenges are really mainly technical, uh, including um, the efficiency of the approach such that one would want to I'd cover every base pair uh, that in the uh, sample of interest, whether that be a single cell or a, a mixture of uh, nucleic acids. Also still, I think the error rates are an important um, issue where we really want to get to the point where these assays are so reliable that whatever the base pair uh, one gets out, particularly if it's different from the reference genome, is uh, accurate and actually there. Um, and I think uh, third, uh, a, a major challenge from a practical standpoint remains the cost. Um, these assays are still quite expensive and ideally one would want to uh, look at thousands of individual cells or, or uh, as many individual molecules as possible uh, to really be able to look at uh, lower and lower levels of heterogeneity, small and small subpopulations. And I think for that we need some further advances in cost reduction so this will become feasible on a, on a large scale basis. My second question for both of you is, what do you see as the future of this research in the next, say, five to ten years? Dr. Dean? Well, I think the future is very bright there. I think there's many possible applications of these technologies. Uh, I think the future, of course, depends a little bit on the application, but I, I'm very hopeful that uh, ever increasingly we, uh, we will be looking at more and more uh, single cells rather than bulk populations to really understand heterogeneity at the cellular level. Um, and uh, as far as circulating nucleic acids, I think um, the key uh, there is that we will hopefully in the next five to ten years develop the clinical utility evidence to show that assaying these uh, biomarkers will improve uh, patient outcomes and uh, patients' lives as well as decrease costs. And uh, I think those are the very exciting uh, things to look forward to. And Dr. Shia, what are your thoughts on the future? I think the single cell technologies um, offer uh, exciting possibilities for fundamental research. Uh, we can address questions like uh, de novo mutation, um, copy number variation, the uh, origin of uh, the genesis of cancer, um, all these magnetic uh, questions that uh, we could not imagine uh, to tackle uh, only uh, a few years ago. And now we will be able to tackle these problems. Uh, on the medical side, uh, as I will present this afternoon, uh, in the area of in vitro uh, fertilization, uh, by using uh, single cell whole genome amplification, we are already conducting a clinical trial. We have already been able to select fertilized eggs that are free from uh, chromosome abnormality and free from uh, undesirable uh, point mutations that are associated with uh, uh, Mendelian diseases. Uh, so this is already being used in the clinic. I think uh, this might be the first example of uh, the clinical application of single cell genomics. Um, in the area of uh, uh, cancer, um, the study of uh, circulating tumor cells, the whole genome analysis also uh, offer some uh, very exciting prospect, either as a way of monitoring 
drug treatment, uh, following drug treatment with time, uh, or uh, as a, a non-invasive uh, uh, prognostic or even uh, uh, diagnostic tools, if we could uh, capture uh, enough, uh, large enough number of uh, uh, circling tumor cells, although that is still a, a challenge that is being uh, pursued by many research groups, including the ones uh, here at this conference. I'm Ann Wynn with Cambridge Health Tech Institute at the 2014 Next Generation Diagnostic Summit in Washington, D.C. Thank you. Thank you.